This is a part two to a story I did a couple days ago. Sorry this took so long, I was on vacation. Make sure to watch part one before you watch this, otherwise none of this will make any sense. Without further ado, let's get back into it. In between sessions, the GM and I messaged on Facebook. I got information about their homeland. During the game time, all he had really been able to say was something along the lines of, you got some information, just due to time constraints. I used this information to write some songs. I came in next week with them printed and ready. When the session started, I was brought before a cleric and asked if I would swear myself to following the light. I thought about it and looked over what it was. The light was about purity, purity of soul and mind, to spread that purity to others. I thought about it and realized that this didn't interfere with my monk vows. What's more, purity wasn't defined. I could make it anything I wanted. Mi's goal was to spread happiness to the darkest places. The GM warned me that there would be consequences if Mi said yes and didn't fully mean it. Larry leaned forward with his eyes gleaming. Goodbye, Mi. What do you mean? If you don't, you're going to be exposed. If you do, you're going to be smited. Either way, me is dead and Tom with her. I could see Tom starting to get worried. Nope, I'm a monk. Purity of body, soul, and mind is kind of a big deal to us. Plus, they don't define how to spread purity. I chose to do it with music and song, inspiring others to action. My class, background, and goal all let me make pledge wholeheartedly. There was some laughter from everyone but Larry, and when it died down, Tom realized something. Hey, I'm a paladin. My purity is my faith. I'll take this vow too. With me reaffirming her class and ideal, and Tom in his character's faith, the GM gave us both milestone levels. Larry choked on his Cheetos. I want a level two. That's not fair. Well, you could have joined us, Tom replied. Yeah, but I wanted to join the fighting pits instead. And you knew there were none, Tom answered again. After that, we were brought into the main courtyard where a stage had been erected. Most of the soldiers were there and the commander and his generals were in the front. He had heard about the shows and wanted to see it for himself. That was where we were made to swear this oath to the light. For that last show, I did my normal thing of telling the GM what I was doing and just performing my performance each act. But also did something special. I actually sang the song I wrote last week. Like, legit, IRL, I sang it at the table. The commanding officer led a standing ovation and was so impressed by everything he had heard about us that he invited us to join him and his generals. Tom had taken the time to integrate himself among the men and learned how to fight like a warrior of the light should. I had entertained his men and had written a new song about his people and their quests. Despite being foreigners, we had both taken the time to learn about his people and their customs, and had even taken the vows to serving the light. He was so impressed by this that he sat Tom down at his right and me at his left. After the great feast, where we got to know him and his generals, me asked him if he would escort her around the camp. It was then I finally got what he was after. He showed me where the prisoners were kept, even letting her see them. He also told her why they had taken them. On the next full moon, they are going to be sacrificed to the light. Though they were heathens, they would find redemption in the light of the full moon and thus be allowed to become one with it. That night, Mi used a drawing skill that Larry had declared as useless and drew out a detailed map of the camp. Tom and I worked together to label guard positions, weapons caches, labeling every building, and then giving the map to Tom to keep. Next morning, we were told that we were going to be given two guards to protect us in these wild lands. The GM let us know that because I had actually written and sang a song, one of the volunteers was the son of the commander's right-hand general. We were also given horses, fresh food, and we were told that we could come back and we were invited to travel back with them to their own homeland. It took about a day and a half travel before we arrived at the meeting point. Bree was already there with several representatives from the clan's allies. After a short fight, both of our guards were killed. Tom cut off both their heads himself. Well, you got your pointless information, but you didn't do anything with it. Yeah, but we can do something with it now, Bree responded. Oh yeah? What did me say? Hundreds of well-armed soldiers in the position? Still true. We should just attack it. What if they weren't in their camp? I asked again. What are you going to do? Sing to them again? 
No, but trust me, Bree, mark on the map where you think is the best spot for you to fight them. Mark where your forces will be brought in. Wait, what? Bree said confused. Mark where you will place your army, and put some cuffs on Tom while you're at it. Cuff me? Tom responded. If I'm placed under a truth spell, I need to say you were taken prisoner. Bree having marked the map, I tore that piece off and had someone tie the heads to my horse. Okay, now what? asked Bree. Line up. Line up? Yeah, think about it. We were ambushed. Tom was taken prisoner. The heads of their soldiers are tied to my horse. Do you think you would let me walk away? I need to be hurt. And it can't be fake. None of this can be fake. Tom needs to be actually taken prisoner, and I need to see it. This is a religious order. There are paladins, clerics, people who can make us tell the truth. So I need to actually run the gauntlet, and don't hold back. This could kill you, Tom said catching on. The GM let him know his character was being put in shackles and let off. I know. What about the map and the army? asked Bree. I can't hear about it. I can't hear about any preparations you make to the where you marked your map for battle. If I did, I might be compelled to tell them. But I nearly died to get them the map of your movements and where you will be camped. Now line up. I need to run the gauntlet. Bree, finally understanding how this works, took her position at the front of the line. Tom whispered something to Bree and she nodded. When me is a distance away, I take out my bow and aim carefully before shooting her. I aim for her shoulder. The GM nodded before looking surprised. Okay, roll the attack. Bree rolled a hit and then explained to me, Hey, you need to take some damage that you didn't expect for this whole truth thing to work. I didn't pay much attention to the rest of the session. They made plans for the battle, started to do things like set traps, locations to funnel enemies, magical defenses, things like that. The druid even got some animals to join. Trees were shaped, and archers were placed. This was just the planning. I perked up when Larry was asked about how he would add to this battle. I sit in the corner and figure out the best way to kill everyone. So you do nothing, Tom responded. Why should I? There's no gold in it. During the first half of the next session, they continued planning before finally feeling ready. I guess I'll join you in the battle then, Larry said. Why? You haven't done anything to help set it up. You said it was stupid and a waste of time. Tom shot back angrily. Yeah, but you're about to fight now. So what? We gave you tons of chances to help and you kept saying no. Tell you what, if you can say one part of the plan, we'll let you in. Um, you're gonna, uh... Yeah, that's why I thought. Keep doing what you're doing and plot how to kill everyone. That's all you're good for. Not going to lie, I was surprised when he said that. Surprised and happy. I had spent weeks worrying about him becoming a murder hobo, and here he was yelling at one for being a murder hobo. I didn't say anything, but still. Larry sat back, arms crossed, glaring at everybody. We picked up with me arriving at the camp. Quickly, she was rushed to the infirmary. The doctor began to patch her up, cleaning her wounds and bandaging her. Soon, word reached the commander. He, a few generals, and his high cleric came to visit her and find out what happened. The cleric gave enough healing for her to speak and placed her under a truth spell, just as I feared. The GM called for a wisdom save. Beaten, broken, traveling for days with every ounce of her strength spent, just holding onto the horse with an arrow in her back, she failed. After telling about the ambush, how valiantly his soldiers had fought to keep them safe despite being overwhelmed, weeping a little to their loss, and she was forced to run a gauntlet, she spoke with the pride of what she was able to do and hold on to, despite everything, and gave him the map. Seeing the map, realizing what the markings meant instantly, the general who lost his son, the right hand of the commander, demanded that he be allowed to take the army and wipe out the last of the resistance and get revenge for the death of his son. Spoken under a truth spell and me's broken body as further evidence, the commander gave permission, desiring to stay back with me. Though outnumbered, the forces we managed to assemble had been able to prepare the battlefield well. The enemy soldiers didn't have an idea of what they were walking into before it was too late. The general too struck with grief and anger neglected a comprehensive battle plan, ordering a frontal assault. The result was all but expected. What I didn't know was that Tom had taken a small group and made their way into the camp. With the map of the guard locations and knowing the weaknesses of their armor, they were able to put up a good fight. Tom made his way to the infirmary. Inside, the commander had become aware of the noise. He stood and went to the door, taking out a flaming sword. He looked back at me, still on her bed. I'll protect you, he promised. At this point, I passed a note to the GM. He continued from Tom's perspective. 
You kick in the door. The commander stands in front of you, his army glistening in the torchlight, which you know increases his strength. A flaming sword in one hand, in his other, summoning a ball of light. He raises his sword, readying the blow. You hear the sound of a crack, and he falls to the floor, neck broken, a look of shock on his face. Standing behind you, you see me. She's wrapped in bloody bandages. The left side of her face swollen, every breath labored, causing her pain, barely able to stand. I speak up. Let's go save your family, me says. She takes one step and falls unconscious. The Aftermath When me awoke, she was back in Tom's hometown. He had arranged for her to become an honorary part of his family. Not his clan, his family. For their valor and bravery, risking their lives without promise of reward, me and Bree were given honorifics by several of the clans and tribes at the battle. We grieved with those who had lost and celebrated with the victors, some more exuberantly than others. It's hard to cheer loudly with a broken face or to dance with a broken leg, not to mention raise a flag and using an arm that had an arrow in it. But in accordance with their beliefs, we burned the bodies of those that followed the light under a full moon. Tom and me's cleric grandfather leading a mass and prayer that their souls find redemption and peace and death. This was done over Larry's grumbling, but Tom and I refused to let it be any other way. After all, we were sworn to the light too. Things came to a head when it came time for experience. We were given milestone levels and the DM gave me some extra XP. Why does me get bonus experience? She didn't do anything, Larry whined. If she gets bonus experience, I want it too. No, what me did was roleplay, which is more than I can say for you, Tom yelled back. Legit, yelled. You don't roleplay, you roll dice. That's not what I imagined gaming was like when I listened to Critical Role, and honestly, it's kind of boring. If you don't like it, no one is forcing you to be here. All you've done is sit in the corner and complain how saving my family was a waste of time. At least me and Bree did something. We never did see Larry after that. Tom, Bree, and I continued gaming together for three or four more months before life stuff happened and they had to move. I still kept in touch with Tom and last I heard he is running his own adventure during League Night. He and Bree are also still happily together. So, this story directly ties into gameplay style. Larry clearly doesn't want to play a roleplay heavy game and you know what, that is fine. Games without much roleplay are perfectly acceptable. However, that doesn't excuse the kind of behavior that Larry exhibits. If you don't want to play the game, don't play in it. Don't try to force everyone else to play your one certain style. It would be the same thing in the other direction. If it was a Diablo style game without much role playing and someone in the group wanted it to be a very heavy Call of Cthulhu style investigation instead, that would be pretty scummy. You're trying to force people to play your way when really everyone is just there to have fun together. If you try to force and dictate the way people have fun, well, you're gonna ruin the whole thing. And that's the main problem here. Larry clearly doesn't care about the group fun. He cares about his own fun, which is bad, okay? Not good. It is a great way to just destroy a DD and campaign. Luckily, through connections and good roleplay, people can move past this as seen in this story. If you are wondering why Larry wasn't just kicked out, I have seen comments like this over and over and over again. Why doesn't the DM kick out the problem player? Well, in this story, there is a reason. This is Adventure League or League Nights where people can't really get kicked out. If you join in, you're in. Unless you do something really, really, really bad, you can't really leave. So yeah, clear that up real quick. But anyway, that is all I have to say for this story. If you enjoyed this, then please do leave a like. It was a long one, but we got through it. If you want to see more episodes of RPG Horror Stories from me, then please do hit that subscribe button. And finally, if you want to leave your own stories or thoughts, then go down to the comments down below. In essence, like, comment, subscribe. I will see you all next time. Farewell.